Okay, first and foremost, I want to give all honours and praises and glory belongeth to my Lord and Saviour, whose name is Yahweh Bahasham, Yahabashai, Bahasham, Wahavakar Kwadash, and double honours to the elder apostles of Great Millstone that teach this truth well. Okay, and that continue to teach this truth well, and to the hopeful elect across the globe, and to the few brothers and sisters listening and still learning across the globe we're going to start on Matthew 3 and we're going to go straight to verse 11 okay this is about what the refinement the hopeful elect which we hope to be I always say it like that the hopeful elect they're going to be refined they're going to constantly be what refined your house is going to refine them because they are of the elect okay those that are not worthy they're not going to be refined they're not going to go through anything they're just going to be smooth sailing okay so let's start at Matthew 3 and we're going to go straight to 11 I indeed baptize you with water and who was this speaking John the Baptist okay which he was baptizing people with water which is really symbolic of what was to come, Yahweh Shai. Okay, which he would what? He was the he would baptize you with the true water, which was this word. Unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. Okay. So in other words, John was saying, Look, there's one greater than me. I ain't even worthy to to to, to fit in his shoes. In other words, he shall baptize you. With the Holy Spirit, which is the comforter, and with fire. So with having the Holy Spirit also comes what that fire. What's that fire? Okay. Being purged, whose fan is in his hand. So when something's on fire and you got a fan in your hand, what are you doing with that fan? You're putting more heat upon it. So there'll be time when Yahweh turns up the heat and he eases off that heat. And he will thoroughly purge his floor, his men, and gather wheat into and gather his wheat into the garner. Okay? So what's a garner? When you go into that word garner, it says Odza. Strong's H214. Otsar. Okay. Otsar. Treasure storehouse. Okay. Store supplies. Okay. Treasury. Okay, to store something. So that's what your house is going to do with the elect. They're going to be what? Looked after. Okay. And gather the wheat into his garner. Okay. By means of what? Them chariots. By he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. All the undesirables. They're going to be burnt up with chaff. And that's indicative of what? What's about to come. World War Three. And when your house what? Zaps up. <laughs> these people with the laser beams. Okay, so the men that are going through in this truth that are going through things count that a blessing Okay Don't see it as all bad. You can't look at these things as negative. It's actually a positive You've got to look at the positive in things also Okay, so bear me just a minute. No particular order. We're going to go to Daniel's 3 and 16 Baba Kesha Because all the men of the Lord they went through something To receive that crown Okay, because now they're going to be written about. Yep, this individual he overcame this, he went through this, he went through that. So, obviously, there's going to be a story for every member of the elect. There's going to be a story of what they went through. Okay, let's go to Daniel's 3 and we're going to get straight to the point and go straight to see if we can find it. 3 and Start at 14. Nebuchadnezzar spake, okay, the king of Babylon, and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not serve my gods, idols, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? And this is spiritual because what Nebuchadnezzar done with that golden image, Esau is doing the same thing today with what the chip, you see, you know? Now if you be ready at the time 
you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, disoma, all the kinds of music. You fall down and worship the image which I make, which I have made well. Bear me just a minute. Which I have made well. Okay. But if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the fiery furnace. So what was he trying to do? Instill fear. Saying if you don't bow down to this image, you're going to be thrown in that fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? So Nebuchadnezzar was a very proud individual. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego answered and said to the king, Oh Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Okay, if it be so, our power, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. So there was no doubt with what they said, they were 100% confident. They were not second guessing themselves. Okay, they said, Well, in other words, you do that, but guess what? Our power, who we serve, okay, the Yahweh Abishai, who deliver us. From what? From the hand of that fiery furnace. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. That's what you call integrity. They weren't swaying. They weren't compromised. They said it straight up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar a fool of fury, angry. And the form of his visage was changed. His countenance against Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it want to be heated. So that he heated it up even more. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in the army to buy Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego and to cast them into the fat, so like into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen and their hats and their other garments. And they were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace okay therefore because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach Misha and Abednego so this is how hot it was even before they got to put them in they were already burnt up okay and considering that they were chucked into that fiery furnace but the men that chucked them in they were already burnt up Okay, and these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, surprised, and rose up in haste, spake, and said unto his counsellors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, okay, walking in the midst of the fire. So they were just walking about. <laughs> they were just walking about in the midst of the fire. And they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of the most high. Which was Hugh, Yahweh Shai that was with him. Okay. So they what? They were walking in faith. In the midst of the fire. And why didn't they get burned up by that fire? Because they were that fire. The Holy Spirit is like an unto fire. Okay. That's why when certain people listen to our videos. They end up what? Our Receiving this word or getting burnt up with this fire. Okay. And that's why the scriptures talk about being fervent in the spirit. Okay. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, ye servants of the Most High, come forth, come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth out of the midst of the fire. Okay. And the princes, governors, and captains, and king councillors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. And that shows you the power of their faith, but it also shows you what they were literally and spiritually, but literally put in that fiery furnace of affliction. Okay, so it's us in the same way. We go through the same thing, but it's our faith. That gets us through these things. I hope this is edifying. Let's see what else we got. So let's get Isaiah 48 and 10. Behold, I have refined thee. 
So when you get refined, hold on, have I went into that word? Bear me, we're going to go into that word as well, refined. I have refined thee. So when you're refined, let's quickly go into that word, zakak. Strong's H2212. Zakak. 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 Refined, to purify. So what, when we come to this, what are we being purified from? Our old ways. Because there's still bits and bobs of the old man. Little, little trait. Well, it's different for different brothers. To purify, to distill, to strain. That's not, a, that's not a pretty process when you're heating up gold. You're straining out all the impurities. Everything. You're beating it. You've got to put it on that vice. There's another word for it. I forgot what it is. And you're beating it hard. That's what your is doing with his men. To refine them. To make them better. Okay, to refine, to purify, to find, to pour down, as you can see in this image, it's pour down to refine. Okay, to strain. Okay, so if you're straining something, you're, 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 you're straining all the impurities out of it. Okay, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. So the Lord has chosen some of these men to go through that furnace of affliction. Okay. And at the end, what you're going to come out better. Okay. So let's go to Ecclesiastes 2 and 5. Baba Kasha. This is Ecclesiastes 2 and 5. For gold is tried in the fire. Uh, tested. Why? To see if it's really gold, or are you fool's gold, or are you real gold? Are you that 14 carat? Are you that 22 carat gold? For gold is tried in the fire. Okay. Which is what these trials. Are you going to want to be in the truth, but you don't want to go through trials? An acceptable man in the furnace of adversity. For as gold is tried in the fire, acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So you're acceptable, and guess how you're going to come out? If you are acceptable, just like this, that's the end result. So this is this is where Yahweh wants to get us to, because when he comes back, it talks about coming back to the bride. Okay, all dressed up in what white white garments. So he wants to come to a bride that's that's made that effort, that's tried her best, that's cleaned herself up. Okay. So with this lesson, I really hope this was edifying. And brothers out there that are going through anything, just keep on um, pushing. Okay? And until the next time, Shalom.